This is my 1993 Honda Civic DX and today I'm going to be replacing the clutch master cylinder on it. Alright, now these are the tools I'm going to be at least starting with today. Um, first one, impact, just to make things faster. Pretty much everything I'm going to be doing you can do with the ratchet but it takes more time. Uh, the tin is for, I mean it's a Honda, you're going to have 10 millimeters everywhere. I'm sure we'll run into some. Uh, the 12 is for sure for the nuts that go on the studs for the master cylinder. This is for the uh, the locking nut on the push rod on the master cylinder. And you want to have a tin line wrench because if you don't have a line, there's a good chance that you'll round off the fitting, and then you're you're not going to be changing anything for a while on it. Um, the pick started to get the cotter pin off the pin. Uh, for the pedal, this is to get the reservoir off the master cylinder, and this I'm going to try to bleed with this, see how that goes. I haven't done it with this before, but we'll see if it works. Um, also, we got side cutters just in case, but this should be all we need. We'll go ahead and get started and see how it goes. Alright, here's the clutch master cylinder and its reservoir. Uh, this is where your line wrench is going to go on to. It's going to be a 10 millimeter line wrench. And this is just clamped on there down there. You can see the clamp holding it onto the master cylinder. And then, But I'm going to pull out this whole assembly starting out with this line because it's easier to get off whenever it's still bolted. Uh, take that off and then I'll unbolt these two. And then I'll go back inside and get the two that are holding it to the firewall. Now. As you can see, this has been leaking for quite some time. Um, good staying there from it. But you got one bolt right there in the center, one nut holding it to the firewall. And then another one. If I can get the camera on it, uh, you can kind of see it through there. There it is on the other side of it. So you got one there to the left and one to the right. And before you take those out, you gotta get right here. You can see this gold push rod holding it to the pedal assembly. And it's got a cotter pin holding that in. So you gotta take this small pin out to be able to push that through and get to the other side. Now since I'm starting here first, I've already got this broken loose. It has cracked loose. The only problem is the reservoir is blocking it from going any further. So what I'm going to do is unbolt these two bolts and move the reservoir off to the side so I'll be able to turn this wrench more and undo this clutch line. Also if you notice I've uh, just now put some rags underneath the master cylinder so whenever I do take this line off uh, fluid will come out and it's the same as brake fluid so it will eat your paint if it gets on there. But uh, I'm going to continue taking these off. I just thought I'd point out put some rags under there if you care about the paint in your engine bay. Now it's much easier to see what we're doing now with the reservoir out of the way and we also got more room to turn this. And there we go, the line just popped off. You can see the fluid running down. Try to catch more of it. But there's so that. before we get the bolts off the firewall, the nuts, we have to get this pin out. And to get this pin out, we gotta take this pin out. The cotter pin holding it in. So we just wanna take our pick, hook it in there. 
and push it out. All right, so I'm getting the pin to come out. I just had to hook it in the hole on top. And there it is. Then now that that's out, should just be able to push that through. And now the master cylinder is free from the pedal and we just got the two bolts to take out. All right, now here on the second bolt, or nut, you can see that my socket is on it, but it's in just such a tight position I couldn't use my impact, I actually had to get a ratchet. So I have a, a 12 deep on there, a three inch extension, and the ratchet. And then I'm about to take that off. Right. At this point, both nuts are off, and it's just gonna be pulling out through the firewall. The bolts are undone. So now it's just getting your reservoir. And there it is. All right, once you get it out, you want to lay it down next to the new one and just look for things that may need to be transferred over. Since mine didn't come with uh, new nuts, I wanted to make sure these fit on there and they do. One thing I noticed though is that the studs right here are loose. So I mean if yours come loose you want to tighten those up. Set them all the way you know, as tight as you can. Probably hand tight is fine because it will be tightened later on. But set them as tight as you can inside the master cylinder. And then just transfer over whatever you see needs to be transferred over. Also we're going to try to adjust the clutch once we get this in here but try to make these as close to each other as possible. I mean, there could be some different push rod length, so they could be completely off, but I'd still want to make sure, set it kind of close further to out than in, because you don't want to start the car and have it start rolling away. Just try not to have it pushed all the way in and just start transferring everything over. So mention is, if yours is, was as bad as mine is, um, you'll have some grease build up inside of there on your reservoir and you want to try to get as much of that out as possible before putting a new fluid through the system and possibly putting this all back into your new master cylinder so try to clean that out all right so what i'm going to be trying to do here is bench bleed this before i put it on the system so that i can get all the air out of it i can just to make the bleeding from the slave cylinder easier um, now, pretty much all I have here is just a piece of tubing, and it is threaded as well as possible into the master cylinder. Uh, shouldn't leak, but I mean it might. We'll see. Um, but the goal of this is to put fluid into the reservoir, take this into the hose, and submerge it in the brake fluid, and then just pump the clutch just as if it was the pedal doing it and you should see air start to travel through the hose and come out and you want to get as much air out of there as possible alright so now we got some brake fluid in the reservoir getting a lot of air coming out definitely getting more difficult and now the reservoir is almost empty because of how much it sucked through so I'm gonna pour some more brake fluid in there Now at this point, you can see most of the big air bubbles are out of it. There's actually none that appears that are inside of the master cylinder itself, and that's what we want. The only one you can see is right here, and that's just inside this line that's not even going to be a part of the clutch system. Uh, actually, you can't even see that, but a part of this line is the only bubble that's there. 
right here is the only real bubble in there. So I'd say this is pretty well bled and ready to go back in. Now, uh, when you take the hose out of the reservoir and you take it out of the master cylinder, you want to try to get it on here as fast as possible just to try to reduce any amount of air. Reduce is the key word because there will be air. And that's why we're going to have to bleed it in the end. But, and you also want to hand start this into the master cylinder because if you use a tool on it, there's a chance you can cross thread it. And then you're back to needing a new master cylinder because it will probably leak. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that hose out and try to get this in here as fast as possible. You also don't want to tighten the bolts or the nuts down that hold it to the firewall or else it'll make it more difficult to get this in here. So just get this started before you put these in here. Once you get this started, then you can go ahead and put the nuts on here. It's just that it's really difficult whenever the master cylinder is not wanting to move. As you can see, I went ahead and put the plug that they gave me whenever I bought it back in there just to reduce any spilling. Also, put the cap and the float back in there. So, uh, just want to put this back through. Also, another thing to mention, yours may have a little gasket right here sealing it to the firewall. I think mine has been replaced before and the person who did it did not put that gasket back on so it's no biggie really if you don't have one but just something to mention what I had to do was go to the other side and guide it past the pedal so it would go in there all right so now this is all set up let's go ahead and move the reservoir back out of the way just to make things easier pull this plug out if that's what you did Pull the plug out. You see the fluid start coming. And just get this started. Alright, now mine is for sure started in there. Um, I can go ahead and snug it if I want to. But I'm going to actually get it a little bit more tight whenever I get in there and get the nuts on the studs that hold it to the firewall. Alright, as you can see, I got both the nuts back in. I also have the pin and the cotter pin back in holding this on. There may still need some adjustment and we will do that later if needed. I'm sure there will be. But right now we're going to go back up top and snug, or actually this is going to be tightening down the, uh, the clutch line to the master cylinder. Alright, this is my slave cylinder. You can see I have the tubing connected to it. What I'm going to do is I have it zip tied right there. I'm going to fill this with brake fluid and then pump, pump the pedal as much as I can. And use something to hold the pedal in place while I crack the bleeder and then while I have it open I'm going to pump it some more keeping the fluid right here so it will won't suck in any air and uh, try to get as much air out of this and the whole clutch line as possible something to mention also is that the uh, slave cylinder bleeder screw isn't a 10 it is a 8 so you want to get an 8 millimeter on it, at least on mine. Maybe a, a different aftermarket one that could have been replaced on yours is different, but for mine it was an 8 millimeter instead of a 10. So I thought I'd let you guys know. Now uh, something to mention on this is that I just left the bleeder screw open on the slave and made sure I kept fluid inside of the master cylinder just an attempt to flush all the fluid out you can see that discolored brake fluid that's just been in there it's way too old and should be out of there anyway and that was my goal was to try to flush out all the bad stuff and then afterwards I did follow it up with a normal uh, 
pump the pedal, pump the pedal, hold it, and then break the bleeder open just to make sure to get all the air out. But right now I was just trying to flush it. Now I made this video looking down at the slave cylinder to where you can peek in on the clutch fork a little bit. I'll be pressing the pedal and you can see the clutch fork move. I'd expect that there's, it's possible to get a little bit more movement out of the clutch fork, but my slave cylinder is not in the best condition, so it's possible that you could get more. But if you get less, you probably still have air in the system and should continue bleeding it. Alright, so after bleeding it three times and adjusting it just a little bit, it drives much better than it did before and shifts much better. So that is how you replace your master cylinder and your 92 through 95 on Civic. Hey guys, uh, right away I'd like to go ahead and say thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like it. That helps out a lot. Uh, if you want to discuss something, maybe go ahead and comment. If you think somebody may need this uh, to help them with their repair, go ahead and share it. Anything helps. I'd really like to know what you guys think. But uh, thanks for watching.